dear students this is shrikant kian astral professor in commerce maharani's women's commerce and management college today my topic for presentation is for final year become student in final year become you have a subject called gst in that subject you have one chapter that is custom sector 1962 in this chapter today i try to explain and make you to understand in brief the topic that is calculation of assessable value or cif that is cost insurance and right and how to determine total custom duty payable now let us see the steps to be followed in calculation of custom duty as per custom act of 1962 there very simple steps are there the step 1 we are going to calculate assessable value that is calculation of assessable value here in calculation of assessable value there are certain items to be added or to be included and certain item to be excluded as per the rule 10 sub rule 1 of custom tariff act of 1962 and step 2 it is calculation of custom duty payable here before you go for calculation very important thing is you have to understand what are the various custom duty levyable on imported goods to importer by the authority that depend upon what type of goods you going to import and you have to see that provisions There are provisions for various custom duty because each and every custom duty has its own provision and certain restrictions and rules are there that is to be keep in mind. Accordingly, you have to calculate the custom duty payable. So in this PPT, I have taken a pro forma and three problems. This pro forma for calculation of assessable value and three problem which include the calculation of assessable value and total custom duty payable here i going to make you to understand in simple way how easily we can calculate the custom duty payable by the importer to the custom authority so next let us see the next slide the pro forma for calculation of assessable value is here so here we are going to take i have taken a, a comprehensive format so here we are going to take the value of material at ex factory price that is at the factory price in exporter country and we'll add carriage freight insurance up to the port to the up to the port of dispatch in the exporter country and the what are the charges for loading onto the ship at the shipping port in the exporter country so after you consider all these three if you sum up this you add this you get a free on board the value for free on board in the exporter country so what the fob you get so on that fob there are certain item to be included as per the rule 10 sub rule 1 given under customs tariff rule act of 1975 so rule 10 sub rule 1 give the provision with respect to various expenses which is to be included to the fob value before determining the customs value of the goods which have been imported by the importer so the commission 
and brokerage. The first item we will take here commission and brokerage. Except the buying commission. Buying commission should not be considered into account, taken into account here. So, and then next we go for packing cost. Except the cost of durable and returnable packing. Then cost of engineering development plan sketches like that. If any such development plan sketches have been incurred, cost has been incurred, which is undertaken outside India. This is a very important point to be underlined here. Outside India, that should be added here. Then any royalties and license fees, risk paid, that should be taken into account. That is to be added. Value of subsequent resale, if payable to foreign supplier, that should be added here. Value of material supplied by the buyer, free of cost. We want it is free of cost. As per the rule 10, sub rule 1, we need to add it. So all these items to be added only if what? If it is not included in FOP value of the exporter. So after you add all the items, the answer what you get, the value what you get, that will be FOB value as per the custom. So as per the custom, we will take the FOB value. So after you get the FOB value as per the custom, so very important provision you have to keep it in mind. It is a provision with respect to freight charges and with respect to insurance and ship demurrage light rage which is given under section 10 there is a rule 10 sub rule 2 let us see the cost of freight here if the cost of freight is given then it should be directly taken if it is not given 20% of the FOB value as per the custom to be calculated but while taking cost of freight a very important point you have to note it here is if the air freight is given Basically, if the importer is importing the goods through a route, then if the air freight is given, then you have to compare that air freight with the 20% of FOB value, whichever is less, that should be considered. That's what the provision given then subsection. Then ship demurrage. Demurrage charges nothing but here delay in lifting the goods. The goods have been dumped and the custom station, if not is been lifted, if any importer makes delay, then the authority will go into levy a charges. We ship demurrage charges only on chartered vessels. If you bought the goods under chartered vessel, then it should be added here. Then light rays are bar charges as per the rule 10 sub, sub rule 2 you have to add. Then the insurance. Here also if the insurance is given, the value is given, if it is ascertained, then the actual value which is ascertained are given to be considered. If not, then 1.125% of FOB value as per custom to be read here. So if you add these three items, four items, usually you get two items here, that is the cost of freight and the insurance. So the ship demurrage and light rate are exceptional cases you will get the items so if you add this item the answer final answer what you get it is called as here what assessable value or we called as what CIF cost insurance right next we concentrate or just I'm going to brief you the different types of custom duties to be paid by importer when you import the goods from various countries. Regarding that provision, and what are the rate and the charges to be levied, and which type of category of goods, what type of duties to be levied, all such provision the rules have been made under Customs Tariff Act of 1925. So here the custom duty classified into two categories here, import duties and export duties. As per the syllabus of BCOM or BCOM specified by University of Mysore, we concentrate only on import duties here. So the import duties are totally we are going to levy different types of duties here. So this totally we have seven. This is the first one is basic custom duty, 
is the basic custom duty we go into levy a standard rate the standard rate as per section 12 is here 10 percent that is for normal goods if the rate as 12 percent 10 percent is not given then you can take the rate which is given in the question so next one is protective duties so this is section 6 of section 1 so just I'll go into tell you one or two lines what do you mean that just to make you to understand that uh, duties here a protective duty it's a duty which is levied by the authority for imported goods for the production of the interest of any industries established in India after the recommendation of tariff commission to protect the any industries established in India on the recommendation of tariff commission they will go into levy a protective duties next one is safeguard duty that is under section 88 b subsection 1 so safeguard duty it is a, a product specific for all the product is not leviable only for specific product it is leviable so it is leviable on the specific product but it should be noted here the safeguard duty shall not be applied to the articles which have been imported by 100 percent eou that is export oriented unit or a unit in a free trade zone that is we call ftz free trade zone or in a scz or in a special economic zone that type of duty is called here sepka duty so countervailing duty on subsidized articles this is another type of duty which will be levied on imported goods when imported into india by getting the subsidy by getting the what here subsidy from other country if an importer get any subsidy for the goods which he import in other country for such type of goods the in our country they will go into levy a countervailing duty on subsidized article as per section 9 year this duty what they levy shall not exceed the amount of subsidy what they paid so it is to be noted here the duty what they levy shall not exceed the amount such amount of subsidy which is been paid so it should be carefully you have to consider here next one is anti-dumping duty it is a duty which is import on imposed on import of a particular import of a particular country where any article exported by an exporter to India at less than its normal value if any exporter export the goods to India for the purpose of entering into market if it is export it less than the normal value then upon such a import or importation of the article the central government will go into levy the anti-dumping duty as per the provision section 9a one is IGST that is uh, as per the section 3 subsection 7 integrated goods and service taxes then GST compensation says it is specifically levied specifically levied on any luxury goods for the various duties which may be levied to the goods which have been imported by the importer now let us try to understand how to calculate principal value by taking an example question. The question is like this. The BSA and Company Limited has imported a machine from UK and the following particular furnished by it arrived at the assessable value for the purpose of custom duty payable. There are two columns are there particulars and then value column the value is given in UK pound and also in rupee the first item given is here FOB that is the cost of machine 10,000 UK pound freight that is the air freight 3,000 UK pound engineering and design charges paid to a firm in UK 500 UK pound license fees relating to imported goods payable by the buyer 
as a condition of sale 20 percent of fob cost the value is not given but it says that 20 percent of fob cost material and components supplied by the buyer free of cost value the year rupees 20,000 it is in rupee insurance paid to the insurer in India it is also in rupee rupees 6,000 then one more item we have buying commission paid by the buyer to his agent in UK is 10,000 UK pound so as five items in UK pound and two items in rupee so we have to convert into common currency convert into rupee let us see the other particular what the information is given relating to this question the other particulars is like this interbank exchange rate has arrived by the authorized dealer which is 98 per uk pound and second one is cbic had notified for purpose of section 14 of customs act of 1962 exchange rate of rupees 100 per uk pound so when two or three exchange is given by different authority or authorized dealer like that, then you have to consider the provision given under the Act. What the provision says here, whatever the rate given and by different authorities, you have to consider the rate which is specified by the CBIC for the purpose of Custom Sector 1962. So in this question, when converting the pound into rupee, we have to convert the 1 pound into rupee by multiplying rupees 100. Then one more adjustment we have here. Importer paid rupees 5000 towards demurrage charges for delay in cleaning the machine from the airport. Make suitable assumption wherever required and show working with explanation. So before going to the solution, just I going to make few points here. So what are the items to be considered and what are the items should not be considered. So FOB cost will consider where price will go in will go according to provision is 20% or actually so is less. Engineering and design charges will add, license fees will add, material components applied free of cost will add, insurance paid to the insurance insurer in India will add, buying commission that is excluded. You should not take the buying commission. And in adjustment, we have one more item importer paid rupees 5000 towards demolish charges. It is also should not be considered, considered as they are getting multiple value. Now go to the solution here. So, how, the, how we get the solution here? It is by converting the pound into rupee. We have to keep it in mind the performa format what I explained in the earlier slide. So we'll take the first item here FOB, it is FOB, 10, 000, the question we have 10,000 UK pound, 10,000 into, convert into rupee, 10,000 into 100, we get 10 lakh, then we add material and component, so the free of cost, the material and component is in rupee, in the question, directly we take 20,000, engineering and design charges paid in UK, it is given in pound, 500 UK pound, 500 into 100, we get 50,000, then license fees, it says 20% of FOB is in the question. So on 10 lakh, we add back with 20%, we get 2 lakh. So this is the includable item, which is not included as per section 10, subsection 1. If you add this, you get total adjusted value or FOB as per custom, 12 lakh 70,000. For that, we need to add two more items. This one is insurance and then price. Insurance is given. I already told you, it is given, we have to directly take, if you not given, we have to apply here 1.125% on FOB as per custom. So we directly take here 6000. Then freight, we need a calculation, because where freight is there. So freight is here 3000 UK pound, multiply into 100, we get 3 lakh, or uh, 20% of adjusted FOB. So adjusted FOB is here. 12 lakh 70,000 into 20%, we get 2 lakh 54,000. 3 lakh or 2 lakh 54,000, whichever is less, it is 2 lakh 54,000. We add these two items to the adjusted FOB. The final answer what you will get it is what we are accessible value. We will go for next question. That is question on custom duty payable. Simple question I have taken here. In the next slide, you go for some few more items. 
related questions. The question is like this. The FOB price is given with the FOB price of imported goods, luxury car. Here, the car is rupees 4 lakh. Cost of transportation is rupees 2 lakh 50 thousand. Cost of insurance is rupees 80 thousand. Question is what? Calculate total custom duty payable if BCD, that is basic custom rate, is 60 percent, like article subject to GST at 28 percent and GST compensation stress is 15 percent. So we have here compensation stress. So first of all, to determine custom duty payable, what we need to do here, step 1 I told you, determination of possible values, the step 2, we are going to calculate custom duty payable. So in one single format, a single uh, format I will solve the question here. So first of all, we are going to take the item here, FOB, it is already given, simple question here, direct answer, FOB is 4 lakh. Then transportation is 2 lakh 50 thousand, insurance is 80 thousand. So if you add all these three items, you get the CAF price or assable value, it is 7 lakh 30 thousand. So now let's, next step 1 is over, in step 1 we have calculated assable value. Step 2 is the calculation of custom duty payable. The first custom duty is what here? BCD, the basic custom duty, the rate is given is 60%. 60% of what? 60% of possible value. So on possible value is here, 730,000. On the 60% if you calculate, you will get 438,000. So compulsorily we have to give surcharge. The surcharge is here, social welfare surcharge. Or we call as SWS at 10%. Subcharge is calculated on what? Basic custom duty. It is 4,38,000 into 10%. You get 43,800. Then next we go for after calculating subcharge, we need to calculate the IGST. There is a GST. That is uh, ACD I have written there. It is uh, additional custom duty or we call as IGST. IGST is here 28%. While calculating IGST, we have to consider three values here. The possible value plus BCD plus social welfare subcharge. If you add all these three, on that you have to calculate 28%. So, 730,000 plus 438,000 plus 43,800. You add all the three into 28%, you get the answer here. 3,39,304. Then, after calculating IGST, we have one more uh, tax to be calculated, that is a duty to be calculated with the GST compensation stress. This GST compensation stress will not applicable to all the goods, it is a luxury car, hence we have to consider this 15%. So, the for the 15%, so what are the value considered for IGST? Same value to be considered this double value plus BCD plus social welfare subcharge. Adding these three items into 15% if you make calculate, then you get 1770. Then if you add all the details, you get the total custom duty here. It is basic custom duty, social welfare subcharge plus IGST plus GST. The total custom duty payable will be 10,2,874. This is a simple question. A question for calculating custom duty payable. Let us take this question. Let us read once and uh, try to analyze it and understand what are the items to be included and excluded by calculating step 1 reversible value here. So the problem is like this, Dheeraj import by air from USA a gear cutting machine complete with accessories and spares. Its HS classification is 84.6140, that is the code here and value US dollar FOB is 20,000. 
other relevant date and information is given here. What is that relevant date and information? At the request of Deeraj, US dollar 1000 have been incurred for improving the design etc. of machine, but it is not reflected in the invoice, but will be paid by the party, has to be considered. Goods are insured but premium is not shown or available in invoice. So the insurance is not available, then you have to take here 1.125% of the fixed rate on the FOB value. The price is given as it is an year, you have to compare with the 20% of FOB value or actual whichever is less to be considered. Commission to be paid to local agent in India rupees 4500. Flight and insurance from airport to factory. So this is the 4500. It will be not considered because it is flight and insurance from airport to factory means after import, whatever the expenses you have incurred, it is not be considered for calculation of assessable value. Only we take the commission paid. Next exchange rate is given. US dollar one is rupees 45. So the old rate I have taken here. Uh, then duties of customs basic 25% GST is 12%. The question is what? Compute accessible value and custom. So what is the solution? Solution is like this. So we, we follow two steps. So the step one is accessible value and step two custom duty payable or total duty payable. So in one format I have shown in the slide. Determination of accessible value and custom duty payable. So what do we take here? FOB value we take. That is the value given in the question is in the dollar is twenty thousand. So we converted only one rate is given. So we will consider that rate itself as forty five. Twenty thousand into forty five year I come across nine lakh. Then you add the design one thousand dollar into forty five forty five thousand. And the commission paid to your local agent is here. It is given in the rupee. Directly we will take four thousand five hundred. So that is the item to be included before flight and insurance. You add all these three items, the 9 lakh, add 45 plus 4500, you get 9 lakh 49,500. So this is called what here? Adjustable FOB or we call as FOB as per custom. Now we add very important two items. Keeping in mind the provision of 20% for air freight and then insurance is not given 1.25%. So freight here actual that is a 20% of FOB whichever is lower actual or 20% of FOB whichever is lower. So actual is given FOB 20% 20% which we calculate whichever is lower we get here only like 89,000. Insurance is not given. So we will take as 1.125% of FOB, that is one thing, come across here 10,682. So for that adjusted, uh, adjustable FOB, if we add freight and insurance, the final value what you get is called CIF, cost insurance price or we call as what, accessible value. So that the one part is over, next we go for uh, custom duty calculation. So we have only one basic custom duty and then IGST here, commonly we will charge the surcharge. There is no any other like safeguard or protective duty, safeguard duty, anti-dumping duty not given the question because it is like not applicable to the type of product which has been imported. So here basic custom duty is 25% that will be calculated on a civil value, it is 11,50,082 into 25 if you calculate get 287520 so charge of 10 percent that is 10 percent means on bcd the value bcd is 287520 and that we have to calculate 10 percent so to get 28752.05 then we have to provide here igst this 12 percent so igst for the igst the value of Value is possible value plus BCD plus social welfare surcharge that is 11,50,082 plus 
टू लैख एटी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव ट्वेंटी पॉइंट फाइव जीरो प्लस ऑन दैट यू कैलकुलेट ट्वेल्व परसेंट यू गेट द अमाउंट हियर वन लैख सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड नाइन सिक्सटी टू पॉइंट फाइव फाइव सर इज आई जी एस टी नाउ द फाइनल आंसर विल बी वॉट टोटल कस्टम ड्यूटी पेएबल और टोटल ड्यूटीज पेएबल यू हैव टू एड द ड्यूटीज वॉट यू हैव बीन कैलकुलेटेड दिस फ्रॉम पॉइंट एट नाइन एंड टेन दिस टू लैख एटी सेवन फाइव ट्वेंटी पॉइंट फाइव जीरो ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड सेवन फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट फाइव जीरो फाइव वन लैख सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड नाइन सिक्सटी टू टोटल फोर लैख नाइन्टी टू थाउजेंड टू थर्टी फाइव इज द टोटल इज द टोटल ड्यूटी पेबल सो दिस द थ्री प्रॉब्लम्स आई हैव टेकन फॉर अ ब्रीफ एक्सप्लेनेशन और मेक यू टू अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसीजर एंड द फॉर्मेट टू हाउ टू डिटर्मिन सिविल वैल्यू एंड द कस्टम ड्यूटी पेबल सो देर आर फ्यू मोर प्रॉब्लम्स आर देर जस्ट टू मेक यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस topic and the chapter I have taken this three problems i hope that you have understood thank you